<laughs> this is Tupanamba Swirl. It's a color blocked embroidery from India. It's on a 100% cotton ground and it's a polyester embroidery, but it's just a free flowing swirl. And to kind of keep with that theme, Otami uh, animals have been very popular and they're all in the design magazines now. This is from an area in Central America that specializes in these type figures and they usually use plants and animals. Animals are the bearers of news and plants are good news and good luck. So we have three. We're going to start with a bright color. We have more of a, a graphite color combination, one that we call pepper pot that's a little brighter. And just to give you an idea of what that looks like in a big piece. Upholstery pattern, it's on a rainbow warp or a rainbow fill in the back, so that's how you get all the color. Toward the end of this presentation, you're going to see the same pattern again treated differently. To go with that, we've done ferocious, and that's going to come in three colorways. It's an ombre of color to match that rainbow fill, and then to give it just another hint of accent with a little gold metallic thread, this is a Tampico. And again, all matching colors woven in the United States. So that's very important for a lot of clients. Neutrals tend to outsell all color that we do. So the next pattern is Ainsley Park, and it's a Jacobean, and we've kept that all in natural tonal colors, embroidery uh, to go kind of with that same feeling. This is Romesco Trellis. It's a heavy embroidery trellis. Sometimes uh, the bigger patterns get all the attention, but when you look at this, it's a beautiful uh, linen-like background and the real heavy embroidery um, floats going across the front. Sorry, I was checking to make sure that was right. This is called fill coupe to the face is the technique, and this is called fringe benefits. And what they do is they weave all of this waste yarn. It used to be on the back of the fabric and they would clip it so that you wouldn't see any of the, the excess yarn, but it was always to the back. And now they bring it to the face so it becomes a design element. And so they go in and hand clip all of that gray would go all the way across and they come in and hand clip to make the pattern show up. And you can see we have that in a neutral, a beautiful cobalt, an Aegean blue, and the natural sterling combination. This is trade winds. <coughs> Again, embroideries can continue to be very popular. We have neutrals, a blue, and then this kind of, uh, again, an Aegean colorway that seems to be so popular right now, but really heavy blocks put together to make an OG trellis. This is Termiz uh, Ecot, and it's an old world uh, styled Tuscan Ecot, and we've put it on a herringbone background to give just a little added interest, so it's not just another flat embroidery on a flat ground, it has dimension built into it. Cherry Blossom, Millennial Pink is all the rage right now. Uh, and what's making the pinks stabilize and not just be a girly kind of a color is they're showing it with a lot of gray and silver and they're, they're muting the color back. So we added that uh, to the cherry blossoms. It also comes in a buttercup yellow combination. And everything that you're seeing today, with the exception of the very last skew in the collection, is exclusive to Arn Coco. We should have just called this Mike's Floral. This is Nottingham Garden. This is one of Mike's favorites. These are backwards. <laughs> we, we need to tell the bookmaker. Um, and I'm going to show for the sales reps that sometimes we get so caught up in what's new that we forget that last season and seasons before are not old. We have to remind our customers what they actually have in their library. So I went back and with the help of Janet Adams, pulled coordinates out of our purvey book. 
and you have to remind customers they have these things. They forget because everybody's first question is what's new. You can mix that with silver gray. The blues are easy. There's so many good blues. Mm -hmm. But you can also go back and pull things like Tommy Bahama and show with it. It doesn't have to be just the most current. And then Janet did this to remind people that we have beautiful fabrics in the warehouse, that we have lots of yardage, but they're um, limited stock or they're discounted. Here's one that's discounted that looks just great with that. Some of our solids that have been coming out, this is um, DeVille, and this happens to be Stonebriar. Tommy Bahama trimming with it looks great. We try to give you some upselling techniques so you could take this brush fringe, add the large rope on top, layer the two together, you get a double sail, and it looks really great. Use a border. Again, all of this starts tying together. You just have to remind customers that it's not just the season. It's what we've been doing all along for them. And they need to layer the products from season to season. The, the idea when we design these books is that this season goes with the last season, last season goes with the season before. But we tend to forget because we're so focused on what's new. This is Avignon Garden. Again, this is an applique embroidery where they're actually appliquing a cord to form uh, the branches. And then they go back in with sort of a cord effect embroidery. So it's a little different than just a, a flat embroidery. This is sort of a modern take on a chevron or a flame stitch type pattern. Uh, this is Tipperon Stripe. Lots of little boxes that make up all of these, we have some great colorways from the chocolate to the sherbet colors to the silver tones. <coughs> sort of Tudor style Ochi trellises have been very popular. This is called the Food Trellis. This one is so heavy that it looks like banding, trim banding that's been applied on top. So it gives it kind of a bold look not just a typical embroidery. This is called Falling Leaves. Cotton ground, heavy falling or graceful falling leaves on their own stems and then not necessarily a coordinate, but it just so happens in a lot of these colors to be the perfect coordinate is button trellis. These are all little concentric circles of rope that have been applied onto the surface. And I pulled a big piece of this millennial pink just to show this is this is how pink is being sold. It's a little bit more dull, not quite so bright. There's the trellis that goes with this. So you get the idea of how these look in bigger pieces. This is Kabuki Fret. It's a pot de soie satin ground with a heavy um, linear embroidery on top. Bold, bright colors. We have a silver, a black, and white. Red is becoming popular again. For a while, red was a huge color, and then it kind of went away. Red's starting to come back. This is taken from the woven baskets uh, of the Papagao Native American Indian tribe. And so we've done this in a bold graphic, uh, navy and a red and a silver. And just to give you an idea what this looks like on a bigger scale, it's just really nice and graphic. And while it is an, an ethnic style design, it's perfect to pair with traditional and transitional patterns. It gives it just a great accent. Also woven in the United States, this is Rio Arriba. It's an ecot uh, woven. It's actually woven railroaded, so it can be used this way if you want to do bedding or, or uh, blinds or Roman shades with it. 
but it turns beautifully for upholstery as well. This is called Coquille, large seashell pattern, a graphic uh, gray tone, beautiful red, gray cobalt blue. This is called Nom de Plume. <laughs> It's a two-tone OG trellis uh, made to look like feather plumes to give you an idea of how dramatic it really is in a big piece. Show you the black combination. Really stunning, beautiful drapery. This is called Stitchery Trellis. Again, heavy embroidery is kind of what we're seeing now. So we have two ropes of heavy embroidery and then a little stitched effect down the center to give it a little relief and a little bit um, more interest. Perfect to go with prints. It's just a great go with pattern. Then last season in the Privé line, we introduced introspective and we had some requests for a silver combination. So we've come back with that. Also a request for a neutral of Amalfi Damask, heavy cut chenille. And so we paired that with its coordinate Amalfi stripe, sort of a wave-like stripe effect chenille. And no matter what it is, whether it's a print or a woven or embroidery, if it looks like ironwork trellis, it tends to always sell. I think this is a beautiful one, it's called Bienville. And it's taken after uh, the iron work in New Orleans. And again, it's really beautiful. It almost looks applicated. It's so heavy of an embroidery. It's got, if you get up close, it's, it's almost made up of a little like grap type uh, embroidery squares. This is called Tangier, another Tudor trellis, this time with kind of a spirograph effect to the embroidery. So it's a little lighter, not quite as bold as the one you saw before. And we've been asked for more contemporary transitional designs. This is a Precipice, comes at a stark white, and a beautiful silver gray. This is all done with shrink yarns and all the weave effects that you see give it added interest. But when they finish the goods, the yarns shrink, and that's what puffs and gives that three-dimensional effect. And again, imagine this in a contemporary home as the bedding or drapery. It's really very pretty. This is Tuxedo Park. Again, a heavy Williamsburg-styled um, emblem crest. And then to go with that, we're going to show the solid, sort of a wool-like flannel background so that you could do the inside of a chair in the solid, do the outside of a wing chair in the embroidery. It's great for dining room chairs, high back chairs. This is called Swirl Away. And this embroidery technique, uh, we're starting to see a lot more. It's actually fine yarns that have just been tacked down instead of completely embroidered. So there's some relief there and a little movement to it. Again, keeping with some of the transitional contemporary, sort of a steel gray. This is called Soho Chic. Again, puffed uh, from a shrink yarn that's uh, finished and it shrinks to give the effect a little bit more dramatic in a larger piece. This is Maasai and it's taken after uh, it's sort of a primitive drawing of native plant life from southern Kenya. So it has sort of an ethnic look but you can see all the beautiful trees. A lot of people are going to interpret this as topiaries which is kind of what it is. Now remember the bright animals at the beginning. This is the same drawing, but just paired back to two colors. This is called pinata. And I 
going to show you the white. This is very elegant, almost looks like a cruel, but it's the tonal version of that. So imagine the bright colors and then someone doing this. We've seen this made up in draperies. It looks like cruel embroidery. It's absolutely beautiful. And this is called Glenwick. And Glenwick is actually woven, railroaded. And Lisa Beckham changed my perception on this. I see this differently. This is the way it's woven, and this would make beautiful bedding to leave it this way. And she loves it this way. I see it as chair upholstery and, and seating upholstery. So I, tur I would turn it. So that is the proof of a first look. Now we're going to go into the true luxe. It's a heavy chenille. Uh, this is Casbah. And you're seeing a jewel tone, comes in a, a darker uh, natural color. And then once again, I'm going to remind everyone how the fabrics on our line should be shown and work together. So we're going to go back to Purve, Tommy Bahama. We're going to show uh, Bronco and Ascot. And I think I'll put the trim. And then again, you can put these trimmings from the Tommy Bahama collection with it. You can also upsell your customer. You can sew this in and they would never see uh, the top or you can talk them into layering it and you get a whole different effect and you get twice the sale of the, of the trimming. So we highly encourage people to go back and look at seasons past. This is very interesting. This is a, a print that has been over embroidered in certain places. This is called tribal threads. And so all of this is printed and this is all embroidered cord. So it's a mix of the two. If this was all embroidered, it would be very expensive. And if it was just printed, it'd just be flat. So it's interesting though how they've captured all the stitch work in this printing to make it look like it's been embroidered, but it's actually just a, a print. of what that looks like a little bigger. We've shown this in Dallas to a few of our higher end designers and they're they're waiting for this. So we hope you get the same results as well. This is Mystic Diamond again, a little bit more contemporary, large scale, uh, contemporary kept it in all neutral colors, has a little bit of sheen to it. Uh, that's coming from silk. It has silk and rayon as part of its makeup, so it's a little higher end look with just a little bit of shimmer to it. This is called mosaic. It's almost 100% covered embroidered. Uh, you have all these little boxes that make up the outside. It has the inside. So really, the only ground you're seeing is the outer circle. Everything else is pretty much 100% embroidered. Show that in a larger piece as well. And this is um, a viscose silk and viscose embroidery. It's called passementary, uh, which is just the French term for tassels. Um, and this is all embroidery, but then they've hand beaded the bottom of all these tassels so that you get another 3D effect. Just show you a little different way of coordination on this. So here's a little bigger piece. A 
again, mixing this with Preve. And then you just saw this earlier. So you don't have to just show the way we coordinated. This worked beautifully back here, but it was shown with the Otami. Janet's pulled pink, orange, and then she pulled an old and goldy from the line. Just to remind you that just because it's not even two seasons old, it still works back and forth. The line works together beautifully. This is called Fantasia. It's a large scale paisley, heavy, heavy embroidery. It's on a wool ground, so we did sort of this show-stopping uh, red and, and graphite, but then we went back and did a flannel and ebony combination. I think we'll see tons. This is great menswear influence. It's not so feminine, uh, but at the same time, this is just spectacular embroidery. So most Tree of Life designs, we tend to see a lot of prints, and they're very intricately drawn and lots of color and big scale. And so what we did, we found one and minimalized it. We kind of updated instead of multicolor and, and lots of uh, pattern going on. We've simplified a Tree of Life design. This is called Hampton Court. It's on a linen ground, heavy embroidery but we've captured all the weave effects in embroidery, French knots, um, cable, uh, rope embroidery, all of that has been captured from a print and put into an embroidery. Uh, we've done it in some bold colors. You can see there's a black and a silver, beautiful navy, a cream, and a tone on tone white. So I want you to see how this changes from color to color. So here's the, the bright red. But look what a stunning color it looks like in the navy. This blue and white is huge. And then, not to be fooled that it can only be bright, this is the original colorway from the document just a linen on white, so very elegant, very understated, still beautiful and rich in the colors. This is called Navadano. Um, there's a restaurant in Como, Italy that is known as much for its food as its beautiful flower arrangements. The whole restaurant is filled with big floral arrangements, so while you're eating this great Italian food, you're surrounded by all this beauty. So we've called this Navadano, and it's a heavily embroidered Sheer. It's not a burnout, it's all embroidered. I just think that's a really nice statement. This is called Flight of Fancy. Butterflies are still huge. OG trellises are huge, so we combine the two. So we have a graphite color, sort of a, a, a neutral color, beautiful navy cobalt color. And then this has a little bling. It's a gold with a little metallic yarn in it on a beautiful comb cotton ground. It's imported from India. Here's a larger piece of the navy. I think it's upside down. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is woven in the United States again. This is called Waterscape Damask. And it, it's a rainbow ombre warp or fill so that you get this uh, effect of, of watercolor. So it's like a Monet floral in woven uh, pattern. Really a very pretty piece. Um, 
And the nice thing is we've, we've selected this ahead of market and by the second day of market, every one of our major competitors had asked to buy this. So it always helps when your competitors like what you do too. This is called Peretti. It's a really heavy embroidered um, stripe. So this is a 3D stripe effect. And then you get the concentric circle again. This is a new motif that a lot of the European embroidery mills are starting to use. This one actually has a little peak of color that comes out from behind. And then a modern flame stitch. Uh, this is called Zenith, and Zenith is uh, linen, cotton, viscose, so you get a shimmer to it. Uh, yeah, I have a big piece. Beautiful for draperies. Great bedding. We also tried to make a contemporary uh, chevron effect. This is called scraffiti, and it's taken after a, a, an art term where they do lots of little scratches and layer scratches, and it builds up an effect on a painting. So that's exactly what this is. And what makes this unique is instead of, most embroideries are flat, and there's one surface level, these yarns have all been embroidered and then embroidered again and embroidered again and embroidered again, layer after layer, and that's how you get these uh, great effects. So we have a beautiful multicolor, great navy. There's a very sophisticated uh, coral combination, which is really graphic and bright. We've shown this to Dallas designers as well. They love this. And then kind of the showstopper is called Joy. And, you know, everybody says there's nothing new. If you look hard enough, everything's been done. Nothing new. I would beg to differ on this. This takes the same layering effect for embroidery, and it uses it like a watercolor paintbrush. And it layers color so that you get tones and shades and half tones in a beautiful floral embroidery. brought a little, it's been cut up a little, but I brought a bigger piece from Dallas of this black, oh, I've got a prettier piece of black here. You can really see, and we've already had inquiries, believe it or not, from furniture manufacturers. They want to put this on the outside of furniture and then put something solid or a, a small texture on the inside so that this is like the back of the sofa, back of the chair. And so they're looking at this as an upholstery item and you would never really think of, a, of an embroidery of that detail being able to be used. But Janet has gone back in and pulled some great, this is indoor outdoor, And again, layering of trimming to go with it. And then we've had a lot of comments, a lot of fun with the sequins from last season. And we've had a few people that said, you know, we, we can't decide. We don't know if we like the gold, the red. So this season we gave them one, one more with all the colors. And this is called Razzle Dazzle. 